My name is Amy Replogle, which is a very terrible last name. Um, I coach at DeVoe School of Gymnastics. I coached Sam from the time that she was five all the way through the Olympic Games. Um, coached her on various events um, throughout her career. Floor when she was little and then beam when she was older. Sam was truly terrified of beam. She was always square, she was always straight. Nothing bad was ever gonna happen. But she didn't believe that part. So she always thought that something, she just couldn't control it quite enough. Um, so she was always very hesitant on any connections on beam. When Sam was struggling with her connections, we would back off of what we expected her to do. Um, and she actually created a system where she would need an ice cream flavor do you remember? <laughs> she needed an ice cream flavor and she thought if she thought of the right ice cream flavor she would be able to connect her series and throw it. Um, so every now and then she would ask, Sam would just say, "Do can I go ask coach so and so on the other side of the gym for an ice cream flavor? And then she would come back and have it in her head and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. But we'd let her try all kinds of things. Um, we were really patient. Um, we would stand there if she needed it. We would spot if she needed it. She might be the only athlete that I've ever coached that I stood there for a backhand spring layout on the high beam, <laughs> just next to the beam for her. When Sam was really little, she struggled to tumble backwards on floor. Round off backhand spring on floor was hard. Uh, we changed her floor pattern so that the round off two backhand springs could go down the side of the floor so that we could be right there without stepping on the floor. She had a different floor assignment. We would send her to trampoline to do 20 backhand springs with a spot instead of trying to do them on the floor because uh, that just kind of overwhelmed her at that point. We knew, all knew what you were capable of. It's just trying to figure out how to get what the kid's capable of out of the kid and that's what was going to work for you. Pushing you or being mad at you or making you cry wasn't going to help you do that. So being patient you, and you would, we could always, we always had a deal, you would always throw one series on the high beam. So you'd do most of your assignment on the low beam, you'd do one series on the high beam and you'd rotate. When you, when you walked into the gym the day after, when you got back from world championships, <laughs> That was the first day that you did the full elite compulsory on the high beam. <laughs> you jumped up on the high beam and you did two backhand springs and I was flabbergasted. I just <laughs> was like, what happened to you? And you said that you realized that you were competing against people that you had always looked up to and you realized that was kind of your moment where you realized that you were just as good as they were. I think what we used to try to talk to you about was that it's never easy. Nobody loves beam. I mean, I know you do now. You get to a point, right? Like once you get your big girl pants and you get your big girl pants, usually second or third year level 10, when you've done all the same skills forever and they're easy for you. Um, then kids like beam. But until then, it's really a chore, and it's one of those things like um, whatever subject you don't like in school, and you just kind of have to do it because it comes with everything else. Um, so there will always be challenges. If you wait until it's not scary, you're going to wait too long. Um, so you've got to figure out what you need to help you push through the fear and kind of feel the fear and do it anyway, um, as long as you're safe and keep reminding yourself if you do all the steps in the right order, you will be safe and being, as long as it's safe, it's not scary. That's kind of the way that I approach it with kids. I feel like we've always done like situational things, right? Like situation cards or like tried to put you in a situation like it's regionals, you've only got beam left. If you hit, you qualify to nationals. If you don't, you won't make it and those kinds of pressure situations and I think that we've always tried to use just what happens daily um, and I did learn this lesson from a kid after you but um, I think you probably did it and just didn't tell us about it. Use the days that are bad days as opportunities instead of a time to be like oh I'm really crooked today I'm just gonna skip my series. That's that's the day that you can train and prepare for the day that you warm up and you're crooked. So if you don't use that day then you've lost an opportunity to train how to correct the series and have a great day anyway.